when he spoke with Gary, it didn't really jive. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but it really didn't jive. Interesting. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the whole transcript <laughs> of the just this is like we, there was a book years ago when like a, one of these uh, mafia informants, the Valachi Papers. It was a movie, and you know this guy uh, Frank Valachi. He he. Turn, you know, he went state sevens. But I got it right here. The Juster Papers. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike is good. So when he does these interviews, the Juster Papers. <laughs> the, the, Gary does not listen to the podcast. I can say anything. I, 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 and I love Gary. We can talk on the to... phone sometimes. For, it's hard to get anyone to answer the phone. He and I could talk sometimes 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Gary opened up the conversation with Mike G. <laughs> and Mike G said, uh, Gary Jester. <laughs> and Gary Jester. <laughs> Gary Jester must have, listened, must have listened to this podcast. You know why? Why is that? Because he says, after Mike said, Gary Jester. <laughs> <laughs> Gary just said, how do you? <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're wondering if you've lasted this long on this episode and you're newer to the podcast, you're like, what are they laughing about? <laughs> well, go back and look up the episodes with the camel. And uh, no. do you want to know what Mike G said? <laughs> Carry on, fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Mike G said, <laughs> oh, I, I'm, good. <laughs> I'm good. How about you? <laughs> oh, I like how we've turned him into Bella Lugosi. <laughs> <laughs> and would you like to know what Gary said? Oh, <laughs> This is riveting. This is riveting right here. Gary said, I I apologize. I apologize for the dog barking in the background. So Mike G said to him, I know it well. Many times I'm doing an interview, and my two beagles are very verbal. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to interview uh, for my second book. And, and Gary said to him, you're quite welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And then it goes on to the... Um, very ri very riveting opening <laughs> sequence. I hope that's all included in the book. <laughs> Uh, it, it's really, you know, Gary's an interesting cat. I love Gary. And I, I he know. He worked for Walter Mondale, who just did. passed away. Yes. I interrupted you. Go no, ahead. Rest in peace, Walter Mondale. Uh, Gary was very heavily involved in the Democratic political machine. That's right. Uh, the 1970s and, and 80s. Became a promoter, promoted uh, Jim Crockett in Baltimore at a time when they were retreating from Baltimore. He said, give, give me Baltimore. Well, do you know what is it? His entree to the wrestling business was got concerts. No, 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 no. no. He he became friends with. Uh, he was he was born and raised in Minneapolis. Oh, okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, our good friend Rick Flair's father delivered Gary. Really? Yeah. Wow. He said, "Mister, Mrs. Juster, here he is." <laughs> yeah and uh but he 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 was a fan and he went to Vern Gagne he made friends somehow with Nick Bockwinkle okay and this is in the heart of KV yeah, right and he had an idea about doing like a yearbook like Gary was like ooh like the baseball yearbooks yeah and Nick Bockwinkle says well you got to talk to Mr. Gagne you know he's the champion <laughs> he makes the decisions and he owned the company too. Yeah. So that was Gary's. Uh, wow. Yeah, I thought figured you would know that. I didn't know that part. I know he got involved in in the AWA and the Pro Wrestling USA, and then he helped launch that. And then he be, he began to promote for Baltimore. Yes, Baltimore the, was his first town. Right. And uh, one thing led to another. 
But uh, Gary's a good guy. You know, you could talk to him about baseball. Yeah. Talk to him about mu- music. Music. Him and I are, are very compatible on music. I think we've discussed that. Yes. Where we're both like the folk rock. We both like the uh, the uh, anti-folk, folk, you you name it. We like the kind of the softer rock, some of the alternative and college rock too. So, yeah, R.E.M. He's a big R.E.M. fan uh, from Atlanta. He right. now lives in Atlanta, so... Uh, he lives next to the lead singer from Driving and Crying, who had okay. a couple minor hits in the late 80s and early 90s. He never told me that. Yeah. He's friends with Bob Mould from oh, Oscar Do. He is. He's who's come to Ring of Honor a few times. Yeah. And Bob Mould briefly was on the WCW creative team. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah. And Kevin Sullivan refers to him sometimes as Bob Do <laughs> on, on this podcast. So, oh, I, I believe. I, I heard him say it once and I had a nice, a nice chuckle. Okay. <laughs> 